What I'm fascinated by right now, and you might be having this experience, but the power of these eclipses and this eclipse cycle, Aries and Libra, these powerful activations dominating reality. I think it's a great example of how both in the mundane world, you know, governments and economies, these eclipse cycles are activating, but also in our personal lives. The thing about the Texas border story that came out right here in January as the sun and Venus and Mars and Mercury have all conglomerated in Capricorn squaring those lunar nodes. You know, it activates the eclipse story. We've been living in January in a major eclipse story activation period. And back in October, this also was a central story between Texas and the federal government around these migrants at the border. And so that story of mundane astrology is a perfect and prime example of how we can use our astrological transit timing piece to map our eclipse cycles and our eclipse stories. You know, and so in your personal life, like you're probably dealing with a lot of this stuff too. I would encourage you to go back to 20 April and think about that moment here. We had Jupiter in Aries back in the first part of 2023. The first eclipse in Aries with Jupiter in Aries, that was 20 April, 2023. You know, these are major slow lower moving planet activations in the airy sector. You might have had events that emerged there. Jupiter bringing some kind of truth, revelation, justice. Now the eclipse has come and sort of there's a tear in those revelations where there's a lot of active energy, a lot of faded occurrences in this airy sector. So it's 20 April, 2023. That was the first eclipse in Aries. The lunar nodes came in mid-July. Rahu or the North Node entered Aries. When Rahu entered Aries, there might have been some major events, but finally culminating in this eclipse season in October, 2023. Now those weren't Mars ruled eclipses, but it was the first eclipse in Libra. And so this upcoming eclipse season that is arriving 25 March, 8 April. This is kind of the point of this video is I want you to be feeling into these eclipses because frankly, I think these eclipses are gonna be so powerful and that in the transiting sky right now, we have the Capricorn triggers where there's a dynamic square aspect. I feel like this eclipse story is like on a fever pitch and I don't think it's gonna stop. From here in January, where I am, 26 January, two months right now, it's two months away from where I sit right now, this lunar eclipse in Libra. Venus is gonna hang out in Capricorn squaring those lunar nodes till sometime in February. In short term, this is what I want you to think about. I'm uh, recording this on the 26th of January. Tomorrow, Mercury and Mars will meet in the, I think, 18th degree of Capricorn pretty darn close, I think one degree square to the North Node and South Node in Aries Libra. That is a major nodal activation. There was a new moon in Capricorn, exactly square the lunar nodes. That was a nodal activation. Think about the events around that time and the events now uh, on the 27th of January when Mars and Mercury can join squaring the lunar nodes. And then the final transit that's upcoming is Venus on 6 February will square the lunar nodes. And so there's continual activation right in this pocket, end of January, beginning of February, where you have these nodal triggers to the eclipse story. This longer eclipse story, April 2023, October 2023, now 25 March, lunar eclipse in Libra, 8 April, solar eclipse in Aries, 2024. These eclipses are so potent, they're pulling us into them. And there's sort of a fever pitch. You know, that's my main advice and what I want to impart on you with this video is this, these eclipses are powerful, they're real, they're some of the most potent energies in reality, the lunar nodes. They can very much reformulate our lives unlike any other thing in astrology and you see it in the outer world with the border crisis in texas two crisscrossing eclipses right in southern texas october was a peak of the border crisis as things came into capricorn in january we have another peak with the border crisis those events are going to peak here very likely in march and april um, these stories with how many states have joined texas sending their national guard troops to texas the federal government might have to federalize those national guards i mean that's heavy duty stuff that's generational events legal Legally within the federalistic structure of America. This is how potent eclipses are. They go to the core of underlying fault lines and trigger our deeper issues. And it's an as above, so below. It's as the within the collective, so with the interpersonal. I mean, you very likely, many of you are experiencing, you know, ruptures of fault lines in your own inner world, especially if you're cardinal heavy, where you're confronting your deep uh, selfhood and maybe your kind of deep underlying core energies of your natal promise in the natal chart, but of your life itself, you know? And so go easy on yourself, love yourself. All the self-care practices are very useful with eclipses because they're such spiritual points. You know, remember that whole cultures would build monuments and timing technologies just to map when eclipses happen. That's how important and central they are to our reality. And many, many cultures have known it going all the way back. This is the fundamental 
architecture of our reality that we're in here. If this is a simulation or a matrix or whatever, the science theories are correct. This sun and moon is the fundamental pieces. Those two pieces are the core and eclipses are about their relationship. It's like hitting to the core of self, the core of the life. These eclipses overturn and rupture. And so, you know, go easy on yourself, embrace your spiritual technologies, you know, pray and meditate, love more than anything, open your heart, be willing to be honest and vulnerable and kind. Um, if things get crazy, if people around you get crazy, just know that's probably par for the course. We're going to get through this. If, uh, we have to. I mean, there's no way out but through. There's a lot more going on in February's astrology, a ton more actually. This nodal context is to me maybe the most interesting thing because it's the most powerful thing in terms of what's coming up here in two months now. Two months, two months only before these eclipses come. So it's the only thing that's kind of on my mind. A lot of planets are going to move into Pisces soon before that eclipse moment. That's where all the rulers of the eclipses are going to be found in Pisces. So we're almost going to have continual activation either in the cardinal axis, which is the eclipsed axis, or in Pisces, which is the sign where the rulers of the eclipse are. And so I think there's like a fever pitch of continual eclipse activation that we've kind of entered into, which is why this is on my mind. But check out the February monthly forecast I'm doing on World Astrology Report with Dan Waits and Steph Koifman. If you want some more localized stuff in February, the Aquarius stuff is wild. A bunch of stuff hitting Pluto is really, really important. Anyhow, just peace out. That's my main message. Chill, love, peace. It's just why we use astrology. Like knowing this, knowing that there's an October to January to April. 2023, 2024, 2024, knowing that that is peaks of inflection, it puts us in a state of awe about the reality, it, but it puts us in a sense of like, okay, cool, you kind of know what's happening a little bit more, so you're not as overwhelmed, like with these news stories. We know this is all about eclipses, the, the eclipse visible paths right through South Texas. We know that's happening, and it kind of gives us a little bit of an easier way to manage it. Like, okay, there's some mysterious thing that's a part of this. It's not personal. We don't have to take it and put it on ourselves, or get angry at ourselves, or get crazy. This is just part of the mystery of life and reality, and it's the best way to use astrology. It lets to stay in the mystery and stay in awe and have a larger container for the events that are happening for us. So take care out there. Hey, have a great one, okay? Talk soon.